Let's learn how to use the plot frequency response sub VI to plot the frequency response of a digital filter. I've already downloaded the needed files to my LabVIEW folder. I'm going to select the one called plot frequency response. This is called a polymorphic sub VI. That means you can pick from the style called direct form coefficients or the form called cascade form. And these give us two different input styles to work with. I'd also like to mention that you earlier were looking at three different files. So there's one for the direct and one for the cascade. To get the polymorphic version, just pick the one called plot frequency response. Now to illustrate how to use this sub VI, let's look under filters, advanced IR, and then the Chebyshev coefficients calculator. This is using the IIR filter cluster and that means we need to use the cascade coefficients form. Simply link those two together. And let me right click and create an indicator. Now there's actually three outputs, one for magnitude, one for phase, and one for group delay. You can use any or all of these uh, as needed. Let me do a quick diagram cleanup on that region. And then I'm going to move the graphs around a little bit, resize them so I can see all three at the same time. Again, we have magnitude and phase. Phase is in normalized form here, and then group delay. That would be the number of samples of delay. All the axes are in terms of normalized frequency. The Chebyshev coefficients calculator has a filter order, which is set to two at the moment. Let me try raising that to five. We see that the response is now more steep and we also see a little bit more ripple happening in the passband. Now the group delay seems to have a, a little bit of jagged lines going on. You can also adjust the density of plot points. That's what's indicated by the number of samples. Here we see that it now it looks a little, little more clear in a little bit, little bit higher resolution. You can also plot your magnitude in terms of decibels instead of linear. Sometimes it's convenient to change the axis to a little bit smaller number for that. Let's go back to linear scale. And for phase, there's an option to select what's called phase unwrapping. If we look here, we see uh, rather abrupt discontinuities, and this is keeping the phase within the range minus one to plus one. With phase unwrapping, then all those discontinuities are removed. Also note that since group delay is the negative slope of the phase response, we see that relatively large peak where we have a large negative slope in the phase. Now to illustrate what we might do with the direct form coefficients, let's use the cascade to direct coefficients converter. This uses the IIR filter cluster, and then it produces, as a result, the reverse and the forward coefficients. I'm gonna switch this to the direct form Then we have the forward coefficients or B coefficients. And then we have the A or reverse coefficients. And I don't discern any change here, but that's to be expected. We pretty much have the same type of filter being described here. It's just a different format coming in. Lastly, I'd like to show you how you can interact with the coefficients directly. I'm creating default uh, constants. You'll notice that for the A coefficients we have a uh, lead value of one and then all the rest are empty. All of the B coefficients begin as empty values. And to illustrate what I mean here in terms of just typing in values and see what happens, 
let's take a look at setting these values to 1. This would amount to, a, let's do 5 altogether. This would correspond to a 5-point moving average or a 5-point averager. We see a characteristic low-pass response with some nulls here and there. We see the linear phase, and we see a constant group delay of two samples. All right, hopefully you have a better idea of how you can plot frequency response of a digital filter.